Rolex. It's a name synonymous with luxury. Through the years, Rolex has come up with terms to describe their own watches. Rolex community and the watch collecting community has come up with terms that they've used themselves to describe specific models and interesting bits about the watches. If you don't know these terms, today we're gonna to talk about terms you should know. There are a few contemporary models you definitely should know the nicknames to. The Hulk, the Batman, the James Cameron Deep Sea Sea Dweller, and the Smurf, just to name a few. Most of the terms that are given to the watches are actually to describe their physical characteristics. Black and blue, associated with Batman, sometimes also called the Bruiser, the Hulk. The Hulk is the fairly rare, fairly exclusive, green bezel, green dial, stainless steel Submariner with the date. And then you have the Smurf, which is a white gold Submariner with a blue bezel and a blue dial. Then you have the new, but not new, Pepsi GMT Master II. It's a 2018 release in stainless steel on the Jubilee bracelet, and the color derived are the red and blue. Again, these are all characteristics that are described by the collecting community and not so much Rolex. They have their own names for the watches based on the reference, but the communities that follow and collect have given each watch these really interesting nicknames. In the vintage market, there's a lot more than just names to describe the watches, but the way that the watches are described on the vintage side is very interesting and very fascinating. In fact, you've probably heard these. Coke, Pepsi, root beer. Let's start with the Coke. The Coke bezel is literally a black and red bezel made of aluminum that was applied to that specific reference at the time. The root beer has a brown and sometimes a brown and silver bezel with a brown dial. Now that we've talked about nicknames, let's talk about what Rolex has done. Rolex has certain terms associated with certain materials that they use. For example, Cerachrome. Cerachrome is the material that they use on the bezels of the Submariner and of the contemporary GMT Master II. That is a ceramic material that is highly scratch resistant. It's great for everyday wear. It is also resistant to UV rays. They also use a term called Rolosaur, which describes a watch that is made from both stainless steel and a gold. So whether it's yellow gold or their Everose compound, and Everose, by the way, is their highly secretive rose gold alloy. It's a beautiful pink material. Uh, I find it extraordinarily attractive, particularly in models like the Sky Dweller or the Daytona. Rolex also uses interesting terms to describe the bracelets. Rolex has four different kinds of bracelets that they use, and they all have their own name, starting with the President's Bracelet, which is used for their high-end models made of precious metals. Then you have the Oyster Bracelet, which is the most common bracelet in the sports models. It's a three-link, heavy-duty bracelet. You can find it on the Submariner, you can find it on the GMT Master II, you can find it on the Explorer and Explorer II. The Jubilee Bracelet was introduced for the 40th anniversary of Rolex. Historically, it's been on the date just throughout the years. This year, interestingly, they introduced it for the first time on the GMT Master II, which was a big deal. It was a big deal for Rolex, it was a big deal in the watch community. The fourth bracelet is the Pearl Master Bracelet. It's sort of a modified version of the Oyster Bracelet. It's done in precious metals. You'll find it a lot of times on uh, ladies' pieces. It's high polish, very, very pretty, very stunning. The luster's fantastic on it. There are a few different terms to describe Rolex bezels. The important ones are a fluted bezel. You've probably seen it on a date just or a day date. What you're looking at is a ridged peak and valley style bezel. It's made of white gold or yellow gold or ever rose. And it gives a brilliant kind of shine and shimmer to the watch that you can also opt not to have on the watch. That bezel is called a domed bezel. It's basically a flat bezel, but the nickname or the term domed is a lot of times associated with those references that do not feature the fluted bezel. The Cerachrome bezel is a bezel made out of ceramic. It is highly scratch resistant, unlike the previous generation aluminum bezels, which could scratch up, they would fade in color. And while that's important now in the vintage market, the contemporary models are not gonna have that same sort of effect if they feature the Cerachrome bezels. There are a lot of interesting terms that are used to describe vintage Rolexes. While not everything is exclusive to just Rolex, 
I wanna to touch on a few key words that I think you're gonna find both entertaining and hopefully useful whenever you're in the market or you're researching the Rolexes for yourself. Dials. I love Rolex dials. The dial is what makes a vintage Rolex watch. There are terms you're gonna hear that are probably unfamiliar at first. And as I describe them, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Let me talk about a specific Rolex term that you'll only hear within that vintage community, spider dial. Spider dial is basically an old dial that is beginning to crack. And the look of it sort of looks like spider legs. Believe it or not, that actually is something that consumers uh, are, are interested in and actually want to purchase and own. Tropical dial, while not exclusive to Rolex, a tropical dial does describe the fading and the patina that begins to happen where a matte black dial begins to fade to sort of a brownish color. It's very interesting. Again, not exclusive necessarily to Rolex. It does happen to other vintage watches, but uh, Rolex aficionados will certainly use that term to describe it. You also have uh, faded dials and faded bezels. There aren't specific nicknames for those bezels with the exception of the blueberry. The blueberry is an example of a term given to a faded blue dial on a GMT Master 2 or a GMT Master. Fat Lady is a term that was used to describe a certain reference, the 16760 GMT Master from 1983 to 1988, and that watch had a millimeter larger case than its contemporaries. Speaking of dials and speaking of vintage watches, if you are looking to really get into Rolex speak, the term that you need to know is the Paul Newman Daytona. So the Paul Newman Daytona was a specific reference that Mr. Newman wore himself. It is the holy grail of vintage collectible watches. There's a specific dial combination that is associated with that reference and with his models and that is a Art Deco style chronograph registers where the hashes have little squares on them. It's also a step dial. Uh, Mr. Newman made that watch famous, and as of this taping, his own personal Paul Newman Daytona sold for a record $17.5 million at auction. In the Rolex community, there are a lot of cool nicknames. We didn't go over all of them today, so if you know of a few cool nicknames, please put them in the comments section or email us. We want to take a look and see what you find fascinating. It's a fun thing to be a part of. I'm John Callahan of Watchbox, and that's my take on Rolex terminology.